is a presentation from the North Louisiana Criminalistics Laboratory. And today we will be swabbing water bottles and this technique can be used for all drinking bottles or soda cans. Uh, to begin, we'll need our supplies. So we can have either swabs for our items and we recommend polyester, cotton, or flock swabs that have a small tip on them. We do not suggest using any type of the foam swabs with these larger heads on them because the items of evidence that we get for swabs, we put in tubes that are this size. So there's no way to fit this large stick and foam head into a tube this size. So we recommend using the smaller types of swabs. So once you've selected the type of swab you're gonna use, you'll also need sterile water. They come in little vials that look like this, and you can twist the top off, and you can have sterile water for the course of that collection at that one crime scene. We also will need a swab carton. So I have pre-labeled my swab carton before I've started my collection with the location of the swab, the victim, who collected it, the date and time. And then I also need an evidence collection bag. So for this, we'll be using, I'm gonna use a paper bag. You could also use an envelope and just ensure that you have your agency case number, agency name and date, the, who collected it by, location of the evidence and an item description. They also do make these pre-printed bags that you can use as well. Um, it's whatever your agency prefers, but we just want to make sure that you have the minimum amount of information on your evidence bags at the very least. So today our case scenario is that we have a burglarized vehicle and there are two water bottles found in the cup holders. So one has a small amount of liquid in it and one is empty. So there are two different ways. If an item is empty and there is no liquid inside, you can just package it directly into a paper bag. So you want to make sure that your bag is the appropriate size so that the item itself will fit into it and will give plenty of space for an analyst who is gonna be examining the item to open the bag and reseal it. So for our empty water bottle, open up our evidence bag and just throw the item in there. Make sure that this item, that you have labeled the front appropriately. And then you want to fold over the top. And then we'll seal across this back line. So you'll take evidence tape in the appropriate length, place it over the edges so that the seal is on the top and bottom portion, and then wrap it around. Try not to get it stuck on everything. And then initial on the seal. Now, this is our empty water bottle. It's good to go and be brought to the lab for DNA analysis. Now, for this one that has a little bit of water in it, we're in a tricky situation because you don't wanna send liquids to us because it'll sit in our evidence locker and can create mold and with drinks that aren't water, maybe a soda or a Gatorade with that sugar, the mold can get even worse. So for these, you're actually going to need to swab it. So you wanna, of course, with gloves on, open up your cap and you also have your, my cotton swab and I'm going to use one swab for this. I'm going to open it up and using my sterile water, I wanna use just a one or two drops of water just to moisten it. This is especially effective if you have like soda cans or Gatorade where it can get sticky in there. And then I'm going to take that swab, I'm going to swab the inside of the lip, the whole outside, and really pay attention of getting into those grooves because the grooves in these water bottles or that lip of that soda can is where you're gonna get the most skin cells and most chance to get a good DNA profile. So you wanna spend a little bit more than two seconds swabbing the sides of it. So give it a good couple times around. 
You can also swab then on the inside of the cap because these items do touch each other during the course of the, uh, while they're in there. You then <laughs> we'll need our swab carton. So I'll open up the swab carton. And before I can put my swab directly into the box, I wanna let it dry. So they have these nice little holes that they can sit in and air dry. And you wanna let it dry for 10 to 15 minutes at minimum so that there's no liquid on the sides, of, no wet liquid on the side of your swab that could get onto the swab carton and contaminate or destroy your evidence and lead to mold. So we have magically waited. Our swab is now dry. I can place it inside my swab carton, close it up, you can either tape these ends down or you can leave them as they are because we're going to put this in another in another bag. So we've got our evidence bag that has been labeled with our agency case name, our case number, my name, and we'll place it inside of our brown paper bag. And then the same thing, we wanna fold this top down making sure that none of the front information has been affected. Get a piece of evidence tape. Close it up. Wrap around the sides. And initial. And now we have our swab from our water bottle. And that way you can still retain the bottle itself that has the liquid in it. However you want to at your agency is up to you, but that way there's no sloshing and juggling around of a, of a water bottle in transit from your, your car to the crime lab, into the crime lab storage locker, to the analyst desk. So whenever you have liquids, make sure you're swabbing the lip or the bottle cap of an item. And then, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to contact the North Louisiana Crime Lab at 318-227-2889. Thank you.